Hello everyone, I'm Brad Exton with Fast Fuel Systems and we're here today because we get continuous calls of people asking what is the difference between fast and our competitors and that's why we're here. We're here not to badmouth, we're here to, to show you what is different about a fast than our competitors and we have two of them here. We're going to briefly touch on them but we're going to really cover what the features and benefits are of the fast fuel system. First to start, we've always had secure mounting. It's always been tucked up underneath the bed away from road debris, steel brackets, but you used to have to drill the frame and that's why a lot of people did not want to go with our brackets. Now what we have is a quarter inch steel bracket here that bolts to the back of the unit. Then we have a 3 8 inch thick plate of steel that hangs from the bed. What you do, you have all this alignment here, left to right, up and down, grade 8 bolts with rubber isolators in here. We also have a rubber isolator up here. Place this up underneath the bed, find your spot, have the bed bolt out and impact it right in. After you do a few of these, you can do them in about, about 10 minutes. Your first one probably take about 15 minutes. If you have a first gen Dodge or a Ford, that bed bolt won't be there, but there will be a hole in the channel. Slide this nut plate up in there, put this up, impact it in. Secure mounting, easy mounting, steel bracketry. If you take a look at our competitors, they sandwiched the a frame with plastic brackets. These back brackets, when you put them on, you'll see them bowing. And when you tighten them down to where, you tighten, to where they'll hold, they'll slide like this. But a lot of times the mounting, you have to mount the unit on the outside of the frame rail behind the steer tire where you can get road debris or when you're pulling it up on a trailer, I've seen them hit the, the frame, you know, the frame hit and bend it back. So you have plastic brackets here, you have solid steel brackets here, 3 8 inch here, quarter inch here, your choice. It's tucked away to where the, our filters are up from road debris. The other thing that you'll notice is look at the size of our fuel filters, our water separator and our fuel filter. About the same size as the one filter on this unit here. Now you may think there's two because it comes with a canister like this. But there's no filter in there. All they're doing is purging the air. They're not separating the air. You have uh, very fine air bubbles. You call it, they can be entrained air or vapor that will go right to your engine through this system. They're just purging the bigger bubbles. There's other systems that purge those. It's those small micron ratings that also wipe out your injectors and cost you engine performance. But look, there's only one fuel filter on here. Our competitor over here, their filter is about half the size. Our, ours is about two and a half times the size of their filter. So you're looking at least double the filter life out of ours. More than that, to protect you, if you go to fastride.com, that's F-A-S-S, -S, no T, you can find 27 different cross-references on our website for the water separator. You can also go to our website and find 27, and that's at this time, 27 different cross-references for the fuel filter on there. The reason we do that is to protect you. Yes, we'd love to have all your business on the filters and you'll get a great deal from us, but when you're out on the road traveling, if you cannot find a fast dealer, you can find our filters. You can go into a TA truck stop, a Flying J truck stop, you can go into a Napa, O'Reilly, AutoZone, and find filters to get you going, or the filter that you're looking for. And they're on our website, making it that easy to, to find. Now, one of the things that's very dear to me is being American made. Over 95% of our product and that's being conservative, it's probably more like 98% of our product is made here in America. That's very big because that way we're employing Americans not just to put stuff together, but to make stuff, make our motors. Their motors are not made in America, our motors are. Okay? Our, our blocks are made here in, in America. A lot of our fittings are made here in America. And just, you can go right down the line. Most of our stuff is made here in America. Now, the other differences between us and our competitor 
is that we have half inch ports on the suction and half inch ports on the feed line right here where they have three eighths on their suction and three eighths on their feed. A little bit of uh, fact for you here, every time you double your orifice, you quadruple your flow, which leads me into our performance radius cuts. Performance radius cuts to us are the same thing as a mandrel bin in an exhaust system. You want the smoothest, most direct path right to your engine, especially after you take the air out of fuel. You don't want to go in into any T-bones, which create eddy currents, which actually put air back in, creates noise, just a turbulent, and slows your flow rate down. And here you can see that radius cut. Because of this radius cut, we had to add the space in between the motor and the base, the filter base, making our unit a little bit larger. But we've thought for that sacrifice, you get the performance. They don't have that block in there. Because when you, when you come in here and look, you can see that T-bone that I was talking about. Then it hits that T-bone and come in here and look and you can see where it goes over to a 90 degree. Just like an oil drain on your turbo, you want the smoothest, most direct path right to your engine on the feed, on the, on the drain because that will slow the flow rate down and burn up, but it can burn up the turbo. And we have those radius cuts throughout this unit, which leads to our fast silencing technology. Used to be, we used to be noisier. We built these for semis and these units were designed for semis. The same motor that we use on the pickups was designed for semis. You could run a gravel plant under the hood and not hear it. But these, on these, this fast silencing technology has made us 9 to 11 decibels quieter than our competition. Remembering every 3 decibels is like cutting your noise in half. And we're 9 to 11 decibels quieter and flowing about 38 gallons an hour more. And that's comparing a 150 to a 165. You may be stopping there and saying, wait Brad, yours is a 150, there's a 165 and you're out flowing by 38 gallons an hour? Yes. Which leads me into my next thing about the industry. For example, this pump here, they put a 100 gallon per hour or they put 200 gallon per hour. That's on mineral spirits, which is much thinner than diesel fuel. Their 165 or their 100 is just a part number. It's not a gallon per hour. Other people may give you a thousand in their number, in their part number. That may be liters per hour. What we do is we speak the language that you speak. 150 means 150 gallons per hour on diesel fuel. Some of our 200s have a PSI rating in there. That's 200 gallons at least at that pressure rating. Our 260s actually pump 288. Now there's a variance in between each motor because it, it tolerances and everything that we build. But we advertise what we pump. We just don't make up part numbers. This one here, we have a 95 gallon per hour. Out, our 95 will outrun their 100 and their 165. It'll outrun their 165 by a little bit. But our 150, it'll walk the dog in front of this one. So that's something that we believe in is truth in advertising. Now here's something else that's very nice. This mass flow return that we have polishes the fuel over and over and over at whatever the gallon per hour rating is on this pump. These pumps pump more than what the engine needs. So every pass it cleans the fuel even more and more. What works great with that are our heaters. Now before we had any electric heaters or we had coolant heat that we could use. Before we started doing the tests I'm telling you about we, I've started the trucks at 17 below zero with no additives because of the torque of these motors. And by the way, the quality of these motors, we've been advertising 500 to 700,000 mile life out of these motors. Now we've been making some changes over the last four, five, six years. We're getting longer lives out of those, but let's stay conservative. Let's look at a half million, half million to 700,000 miles out of this motor. 
our failure rate is right at 1.67%. We're striving for zero. We hate having failures, but if anyone tells you they build a lot of product and don't have failures, they're lying to you. We want to shoot straight with you. But 1.67% return rate on these motors. They're very quiet, they pump more fuel, and they last. We over-engineer these, and one of the reasons is, is because of the extreme cold. We've been down to 17 below zero, no additives, straight number two fuel, and started just fine. We're gonna, and you can look at some of our other videos now where we have probes in the tank, things like that. We're going up and doing some more testing up in Canada and Alaska. Now we have electric heaters. You can put this electric heater in here for your cold weather startups and or you can put it in down here when you don't have this cutaway. You can also, every titanium has this, you have a heater port here to put coolant through and here it goes through, it doesn't matter which way it's going, you want to make sure to have a shutoff valve because you don't want to heat your fuel when you don't need to. But I've ran at 40 below zero with no additives. And I was up in Canada this year. Ran up, had straight number two fuel. Ran up, it was about minus 27 degrees Fahrenheit. Had the heaters on, had a temperature gauge in the truck so I could read the fuel temp also. And it's keeping about 45, 47 degrees in the tank with these heaters going. We're, gonna, we're trying to run until it shuts it down. And that's what we want to know is what our limitation is. But I think straight number two fuel starting at minus 17 with no additives is pretty dang good. So we've covered the flow rate, we've covered being American made, the mass flow return, the fast silencing technology, the performance radius cuts, we've covered the heaters. You know, we've, we're giving you a lot of features here. The filters, going stepping back to that, these filters are almost the same cost and you're getting two and a half times the filter. You're getting double the filter as of this one. So, there are some of your features and your benefits. We're going to start talking, I'm going to come back and we're going to cover why you want fuel air separation and why you want true fuel air separation and not just purging of the bigger bubbles. We have a diagram here from Caterpillar. We gave it some colors so where you can see and distinguish between the parts here. They're discussing one of the three items we're going to talk about on injectors. Caterpillar says there's at least 10% air in fuel. Other manufacturers, other OEMs talk about air and fuel also. But we use Caterpillar right now. They talk about at least 10% air and fuel. My question is, if we're taking at least 10% air out in fuel, of fuel, are we increasing lubricity by at least 10%? Now, when you think of lubricity, you think of a film, you think of oil. Think, you know, imagine a crank around a rod. You're looking at that film barrier to keep the two metals apart so they don't touch. When they touch, that's called galling and scoring. So, are we increasing lubricity at least 10%? I believe so, because we're becoming very well known for saving injectors. This is a unit injector here, and we'll get into this. What they're talking about is when the plunger's going up and down to compress the fuel here at the tip, fuel creates a cushion. I like to call it a shock absorber for that plunger to spring off of. Caterpillar says when you have a lack of fuel, you have at least 10, at least 50% more impact. And that's where some of your blown tips come from. Now, when you have fuel, air, and high pressure coming out, that builds a, a cutting torch effect. So you have a flame coming out of that orifice. And what I'm, I'm starting to come to believe from the racers that I know and the people in performance is that as it favors that hole, so it's opening that orifice up, which we have confirmation of that from Caterpillar, that you do have a flame coming through. Once it starts opening that orifice up, I believe it's gonna start favoring that hole and start burning into the piston. And that's some, I have a lot of agreement from the racers and the high performance people on that one. And even some of the stock, you know, people building stock engines, they say that's where you can get um, holes burned into the piston. So, and that's on a common rail, that's on a unit injector, barrel and plungers that you have that also. But as we go in up into the higher pressures, a fuel system, the tolerances become tighter and tighter to compress that fuel at the tip or squirt it out of the unit, you know, the uh, common rail. And then the lubricity even comes, becomes more important because you, you can get that Gaulian scoring, that metal on metal. And if it doesn't hang up and just completely hang a plunger, 
So it'll sit there and wear over a period of time to where there's more tolerance in between and you lose efficiency of that injector of compressing the fuel at the tip and it starts blowing it up the side. So that's where you have injector failures and you also have it with water and dirt and we talked about the mass flow return on the fast, sitting there continually polishing it. Well, that's going to help out your injectors. I was on the radio this last year with Kevin Rutherford on XM and he covers a program called Let's Truck and he specializes to the owner operators and I was talking to him about how we save injectors. And I said, this is becoming a common theme, just not one theme that we're running with. But what that theme is, what that theme is, is that people will be going through injectors here and there. After they put the FAST system on, they quit going through injectors. My question is, is that I know some injectors were getting ready to check out, but are we giving it enough lubricity and enough of a shock absorber to keep that injector going? Apparently we are. And he, uh, we have a common customer, AJ, that does testing for Kevin, and he's also been running our system, and at that time for about five years. He calls me up within about three minutes of getting off the phone at an interview with him on the radio. He says, Brad, it never dawned on me. I said, I had the, uh, this Caterpillar for five years you know, prior to the fast, went through, no, he, it was three years prior, went through about 15 injectors. He says, I've had the FAST on there for five years now, over 600,000 miles, and the motor's still running, 600,000 miles, and I haven't had one injector failure. That means he hasn't had to go into the shop and pay for labor, he hasn't had to buy injectors, and he hasn't been under a load and had a failure to where he couldn't deliver that load. So his productivity, his profits are going up there. So when it comes to injector savings, you go with FAST, we'll help you out more than anyone else out there. You'll have the cleanest fuel possible with a fast system. No one touches us. Yes, we use other people's filters, but it's our process that we take it out, you know, taking out the dirt, water, and air. Now, this air in the injector tip, taking away the cushion, also takes away performance. And that's our next, what we're going to talk about. I just want to give images here. These are not act, actual images. These are just to get ideas across. Let's imagine that we're looking at the injector tip from underneath. And imagine this being 100% correct spray timing. This is 80%, this is 60%. You can put label these whatever, but just for this discussion. Now, we're, we're making it, when you're talking about timing, and let's imagine this being your injector tip, this being your piston, we're talking about very small degrees making a huge change, okay? But I'm going to use some different strokes here so you can actually, we can discuss it. When you advance your timing, you're advancing it where the piston's down here coming up. When you retard your timing, your, your piston's closer to top dead center. Now, when you advance your timing, you have a longer, longer period for the spray pattern to come out and distribute across the piston or cylinder, however you want to look at it. When you retard your timing, that reduces the time and the, for the spray to come out. It also you have to fight against pressure. So when the fuel comes out, it's fighting against pressure. Pressure builds heat, so it's trying to ignite earlier. So when we advance the timing, which we're finding out that we advance the timing by anywhere from zero degrees to three and a half degrees so far. That's what we're learning. With the, now, we're not advancing the timing over what the manufacturer sets it at. Air retards the timing from the manufacturer setting, okay? So we advance it down here, we give it a longer burn than if the fuel comes out when the piston's up here. So when you have that longer burn, you burn more of the fuel. You have more of a complete burn. From that complete burn, you get power. Now, if you don't abuse the power we give you, we have power ranges anywhere from about 15 horse all the way up to 60 horse, depending on the type of engine. So we're going to give you more power with the same amount of fuel. So that's where the fuel mileage comes in. We're able to give you more power with less fuel. You use less fuel if you don't bury your foot into it. We're going to give you more fuel mileage. Now, we do not guarantee that. FAST does not guarantee fuel mileage. Here's a term that we like to use. Fuel mileage is to be had. And we're not going to guarantee it. We shoot very honest or truth in advertising here. Semis on the conservative side have about four tenths of a mile per gallon to be had. Some of them are getting seven, eight, nine tenths. There's a few older, mechanical, get older mechanicals getting more than a mile per gallon, but let's talk four tenths of a mile per gallon is to be had. 
in the pickup industry and take four tents and add that up over 125,000 miles or more and you're looking at about a, about a three month payback. On pickup trucks, we're usually seeing on em running empty two to three more miles a gallon where customers are experienced by, experiencing about 80 to 90 more miles to a tank. The hot shotters where they're hauling loads, they're seeing about a mile and a half. So those are what, what is to be had and I'm gonna reiterate, we do not guarantee that because there's too many variables for us to guarantee. What we're gonna do is increase your injector life, we're gonna make the engine run like it was designed to run and we're the best ones at it. We've been doing this longer than anyone out there building systems.